the Count is dead, but his music will never die. Count Basie, whose big band was a fixture on the American jazz scene for 50 years, died of cancer this morning. He was 79 years old. Fred Briggs tonight on the Basie Legacy. He made it seem so easy, the underplayed piano that set down the bare outlines of what his band, after an offhand signal, would fill in with blazing driving detail. This was the music of William Basie, nicknamed The Count by a Kansas City radio station back in the 1930s. Because there was a kind of jazz peerage then, Duke Ellington, the Earl of Hines, Benny Goodman, the King of Swing, but it was Count Basie who turned swing into a verb. We had a little band that just played. I mean, we could sit down and just play. I mean, with any no any thoughts of what was going to happen as all. Well. I all I had to do was just to start something with the rhythm section, and uh, the guys just came up and we just created things and we went along. One o'clock jump, cute. Every day I have the blues, and his memorable treatment of April in Paris, featured in a somewhat memorable film. The Basie Band has been on the road almost half a century. In 1979, Kansas City brought him back to celebrate his 75th birthday. It was the audience, though, that got the real birthday present. Only a handful of big bands can be found today. It would be good to believe someone will continue the Basie sound, but from Glenn Miller to Duke Ellington, bands that tried to continue without their leader have not fared too well. It's been too hard to do. And Count Basie always made it seem so easy. That's all. Everywhere included the middle of the desert, band and all, in the movie Blazing Saddle. Now here's the boogie woogie, now let's speak. Come on, you dancers, on your feet. The winners get the prize, as you all know, and we pick them by the speed in the class they show. Let's go! The latest Count Basie album has just been released. It's called 88 Basie Street. Basie spent much of the last half century doing what he loved best, playing on the road. I just love the road itself. That's the only thing I know is the road. And I don't know what anything else I could do if, if I wasn't on the road, unless I was really taking a vacation or something like that. So. Count Basie's one glaring fault was modesty. He made music, but he didn't talk much about it. The music spoke for itself. I'm just a big band piano player, was the way Count Basie described himself. As long as I can get car fare home and room rent, I'll be around. Count Basie is survived by some of the best big band music that there will ever be. We'll have more of that to close our program, as well as comments from Benny Goodman, Tony Bennett, and other friends of Count Basie. Perhaps the greatest magic of jazz was hearing it live, being there. Well, the same holds true today for rock and roll. Catherine Mann reports.
Hello, New England. This is Angela Rippon. Now, in spite of the fact that some of you may think I talk a bit funny, you just might like what I have to say about arts and entertainment. Weeknights on News 7. Earl Hawkins. And upon Basie was bestowed the title of Count. Tonight, no mourning for departed nobility, no lamentation of his death. Instead, a celebration of his life. And we begin that with this report from Richard Threlkel. Now here's the boogie woogie, solid feet. Come on, you dancers, on your feet. The winners get the prize, as you all know, and we pick them by the speed and the class they show. Let's go! <laughs> Basie's music came along before there were such things as drive-time radio and fancy living room stereos and Walkmen. It was real live music, and you were supposed to dance to it. It was swing music. Benny Goodman invented it in 1935. He was the king of swing, and Ellington was the duke, so William Basie became the count. Count Basie's swing music didn't swing so much as it sort of glided. In the 30s and 40s, the era of the big bands, Count Basie's big band numbered among it some of the finest soloists that jazz ever produced. They were all free spirits, and it could have been anarchy, except you knew they were all marionettes, and there was Count Basie at the piano, quietly pulling the strings. You know, playing, and all of a sudden, Basie would come in, bling, 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 and would say it all. Basie learned his piano from Fats Waller, but he didn't pound the piano like Fats. He just tickled it with three fingers, effortlessly, like Sam Snead hit a golf ball or Ted Williams hit a homer. Not a wasted motion. Just like a very good uh, Chinese painting of some sort, you know, with a lot of lines would be left out. Uh, he played piano the same way. And it was his economy that uh, made the music explode, actually. band disbanded after the war when the big bands fell on hard times but before long he regrouped and he'd been playing Basie ever since the same kind of music he started out playing 48 years ago no apologies I must play me because that's the only way I could do it I couldn't do it any other way WBLS in New York, Frankie Crocker with you. Good afternoon and welcome. Today, uh, of course, we lost uh, a great man, Count Basie. Today, if you listened, you could hear Count Basie all over Manhattan and all over the country, playing nothing but Basie in his memory. Whoever played for him or played with him will remember the Count as a nice man. He showed up improbably in the middle of the desert a couple of years ago in the Mel Brooks movie Blazing Saddles, serenading Cleavon Little with the Basie Standard, April in Paris. William Basie's gone off into the sunset now, but there's still a Basie band still playing April in Paris, playing it the Count's way. The Count is gone, but happily, the band plays on. I'm Richard Threlkeld in New York for Nightline. Joe Williams sang the blues with Count Basie's band in the 1950s, and he's still singing the blues today. 
He'll join us in a moment. Joe Williams was the vocalist with Count Basie's band from 1954 to 1961. And most of Count Basie's hits from those days are also Joe Williams' hits. So much a part of the basic repertoire that Williams has continued to perform with the Basie band periodically ever since. Joe Williams is with us now live from our affiliate WFAA in Dallas. Mr. Williams, thanks very much for, for coming in tonight between your performances at the Fairmont Hotel. And I'd like to start by asking you that I've read and I saw him on television not too long ago referring to you as his number one son. What did he mean by that? I, I think he got to that maybe by my referring to the fact that he uh, spawned me on the entire world. I was a local singer in the Chicago area, singing in Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, and Cleveland. And he asked me to join the orchestra and to see what people all over the country thought of the work uh, my work and because of recordings, uh, uh, Norman Granz and those people, it became people all over the world within a year's time, from 55 to 1956, with every day I have the blues and all right, okay, you win. And then he used to say I was his number one son, because I told him, you know, you spawned me on the whole world. Well, in addition to spawning uh, you on the world, did you learn anything from him? I ask you that because I once read that Frank Sinatra when he was singing with uh, Tommy Dorsey's band, he'd watch very carefully the way Tommy Dorsey would play the trombone and take a little bit of air in out of this side of his mouth. Uh -huh. Did you learn anything playing with Basie? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Basie taught me to relax. He also taught me to, uh, to not give, as he puts it, don't ever give up all you know, kid. You know, to save something, keep something in reserve uh, so you could always peak, uh, and that way uh, you would enjoy your work much more, and you could work longer at it, I think, too. And I learned many things, many other things from him, how to look the other way when um, uh, little things might go wrong, you know? All those things I watched him and learned, tempo, programming, uh, how to set up an audience and what have you, the change of tempos, you know, uh, the change of moods. Well, now that we got you in, I hope you don't have anything in reserve tonight. Uh, you very kindly brought your accompanist, uh, Norman Simmons. And rather than me get into what you're going to sing, I'll blend in the wallpaper, and you can introduce the song and tell us what's behind it. Now, this particular song, Mr. Basie and Jimmy Rushing used to do, and Jimmy Rushing was his first vocalist. Norman, if you please. I want a little girl. Thank you very much. Can we coax one more out of you? 
<laughs> oh, Jerry, you, you want another song immediately. Thank you. Here's a song uh, written by Ubi Blake and Andy Rizal. And as you must know, Basie admired him very much, these men. That little jukebox right over there is like a magic key. For it can take me anywhere on wings of memory. I'd give a dollar for a dime. I've got to hear that record play again. Turn love's December into May again. One more time I'd give a dollar for a dime I've got to hear that sweet refrain again That carries me down lover's lane again Back when the world was all in rhyme That song was written for us Every word and note has charm Our two hearts would sing the chorus As I hold you in my arms I'd give a dollar for a dime Mr. Williams, thanks very much. If you can stick around for a moment, we're going to be talking in a moment to Lionel Hampton, a very old friend of yours, a very old friend of Count Basie's, and maybe uh, you can stick around and revive the memories and the music of Count All Basie. Right, we'll be back in just a moment. Tomorrow, I'll be with President Reagan reporting to you as his visit to China continues. Steve Bell on ABC's World News This Morning, right before Good Morning America. I'm Joan London. Tomorrow we'll cover the President's Day in China. We'll also meet the Mother of the Year. She's Marriott Hartley. And Christy Brinkley joins us on Good Morning America. Lionel Hampton, like Count Basie, came on the American musical scene in the 1930s. The first vibraphonist in jazz, Hampton played with Louis Armstrong and with Benny Goodman before becoming a band leader in his own right. <laughs> Hampton's currently appearing in St. Louis and joins us now from station KPLR in St. Louis. Mr. Hampton, you played with Benny Goodman at the same time that uh, Count Basie was playing in the 30s. And Benny Goodman was the king of swing. Count Basie was the count. I think there was nothing but mutual admiration and affection between them. But what was different about the Basie beat and the Goodman beat? Well, Basie had a sure uh, a more uh, a black beat, you know. And uh, it came from the area he came out of Kansas City, where the great Benny Morton band uh, was had, had been reigning supreme. And I think Bass used to be a piano player in the ben, Benny Morton's band. And there's so a Harlem Leonard's band, and it was such a great group of great jazz music coming out uh, of Kansas City at that time. Until Basie organized his band, and then came east, you know, and played on 52nd Street, and that was. That was all she wrote after that. <laughs> well, uh, Benny Goodman had uh, two uh, black uh, musicians, uh, you and Teddy Wilson on the piano. It was the first actually integrated uh, musical group the country had ever had. Did Benny Goodman borrow from the, uh, the black beat of uh, Count Basie? 
Well, well, Benny Goodman was very unusual. He he had that beat in him, you know, that uh, that that sympathetic, uh, uh, soulful beat, and and uh, he he idolized that type of music, and uh, he lived with it, and he could play it. And you know, uh, I don't think he borrowed anything. I think he had it in his soul. Count Basie said the big band never went away. Uh, it's always been here. Well, you've been playing for a long time. He continued to play right up until almost the time of his death. Has the big band ever gone away? Not with me. I, I've always had a big band and always played in a big band in the same way with Basie. You know, um, Basie was a genius with his music. He was a genius with the, the big band music. And uh, I mean, one thing about Basie, I never heard Basie say an unkind word about any his fellow beings, man or woman, and never heard a man or woman speak unkindly about Basie. And, uh, and this all goes with music. As you live your day-by-day -day life and you have a love and affection, it shows up in your music. And I'm quite sure that Mr. Basie had oodles of, of uh, love in his heart for his fellow beings and for his music. Did all that love show tonight when you played the tribute for him in St. Louis? Yes, it did. Uh, the, the house was uh, as quiet as a church mouse at first, and then it broke down in applause, and, and uh, as you, you said, they were really with it, and they felt it. Mr. Williams, when you were, I was watching on the monitor listening to Richard Threlkel's report, and I couldn't tell whether you were between mixtures of laughter and tears and memories. What were you thinking about at that moment? I was thinking about uh, trying to get it right. See, I grew up like Lionel Hampton and Basie playing on radio, you know. And uh, you weren't visual on radio, so you had to get it right. Otherwise, they threw you off the air. <laughs> and so when I do television or when I do Carnegie Hall or when I do what I'm doing now at the Paramount in a short time, the name of the game is to try and get it right. Uh, was it different getting it right with Count Basie and then you uh, sang with Lionel Hampton? Was it different? No, you see, that's something else I think that is innately uh, a part of what we do. A search for excellence every time. In fact, I was talking to Mr. Simmons a minute ago. He used to work with a group. He worked for Dakota Staten. And uh, her husband and manager used to say, uh, every night is Carnegie Hall. So no matter <laughs> where you are, if you're in the bushes, you know, somewhere at a roadhouse, or if you're in a concert hall, or if you're playing for dancing. Every night is Carnegie Hall, because that is the real joy of being a performing artist, is getting it right, as close to right as you can. Coming from the background both of you have come from, do you sometimes think that modern musicians, uh, the rock stars, fake it, slur the words, get by with murder, make more money than you ever made in those days? Oh, I don't know. They probably work harder too. <laughs> we do. Uh, I, I think. I think it's a case of, uh, that some of us get by with on uh, nerve because I uh, I've heard some of those bands play and they was playing and then change for two chords. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, that's quite chord. true. Mr. Huh? Williams, we just got about 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, can you tell me, as the number one son, what would be Count Basie's legacy? to American music? I think the joy that his music gave people while he was living and will continue to give people after uh, his death. Because I just finished working in three different universities and they opened with Count Basie's charts playing his music, strike up the band. And wherever he is, the band will be striking up. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Williams. Thank you very, very much, Lionel Hampton. I can't tell you, uh, it was not only a privilege, it was a great treat. Thank you very much. Okay, when we return.